Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm your writer. Also joining us is Katie. Hello, I'm Aeon Ian on the forums and Discord. And lastly, but not least, we have a special guest, two times New York Times bestselling author, Jancy Patterson. Hi. Hello. I like that. Yeah, which is true because mm -hmm. because this book that's phasing into my green screen uh, <laughs> made to the New York Times bestseller list. It did. It? First time for the series, according to Brandon. Yeah. So. I, I can't imagine why the first four scholastic ones that uh, didn't make the New York Times bestseller <laughs> list when. Well, anyway, yeah. with those excellent covers in right. uh, 2010 ish. <laughs> but I, I think. For our last interview, Skyward Flight hadn't hit New no. York Times yet. No, because that was hit after... USA Today, I think. Cause, well, because yeah, it was sure. all digital, right? Yeah, At it was time. all digital. Yeah, it came out in March, and I think we recorded it in December. So we also have the Skyward Flight, which is Yay! a very thick. Like the value for money for buying this is absurd because this is a this is it's a like a Skyward book. book and a half. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's getting to the point. It's not quite a good Stormlight level of bonking someone on the head no. weapon wise, but it's pretty good. It's solid. Uh, so, Jancy, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. Happy to be here. How, how does it feel to finally be done with uh, the, the Alcatraz series and for the book to finally be out and people like it? It feels so good. I, how, I don't know how long ago I wrote that, like maybe <laughs> four years that I did the first draft, something like that. It's been a long time. And so for a long time, I've been telling people, oh, this is the thing I'm doing. Someday you'll read it. Someday. <laughs> and it's really nice to be able to say, you can read it. Go get it. <laughs> it's yeah. available. Because yeah. I, I think that was the first like co-written thing he ever announced yeah. mm -hmm. i think so and so many yeah. other things came out before it yeah yeah mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so yeah because it was a long road because there was a time where like we were waiting for illustrations and stuff that took a while right no it wasn't it was not Haley's fault oh, <laughs> no, okay. Haley. what we were waiting on was um, they were in the middle of some really big stormlight negotiations and Joshua, uh, Brandon's agent, I think rightly did not want to muddy things with Tor by throwing Bastille into the mix. And so he wanted to wait until that was done. And so, and that was fine. So when that was done, um, then they started negotiating with Tor, but negotiating and signing contracts and things takes a minimum of a year in mm -hmm. New York it just does it doesn't matter okay. how simple it seems like it should be it just never is and so then that was an additional year and then they wanted to put out and I'm not this is not a criticism of them I think it was a great decision but they wanted to put out all the books in paperback with new covers before they put out Bastille which I think was a great decision but it delayed it another year sure, because sure. that's there's all of that work and all of that that had to go through too so that's why it took so long it was mostly publisher stuff there, so. there are a lot of I, I have almost an entire bookshelf of Alcatraz books of just like the <laughs> yeah. original Scholastic. I now have all the, the hard covers. And, you know, mm -hmm. when this book comes out in paperback, then that will all match, too. I do really yeah. like that they did match the hardcover style, which I'm sure is yeah. very confusing for anyone buying the paperback. But right. I really appreciate that it actually fits with on the shelf with all the others so that's good yeah isaac and dragon steel were very much like we really want you to do this for the fans and they did it and i was so happy yes. to see that yes yes, uh, yes i am thankful for that yes because yeah. it's there's nothing worse than have buying a series and then them changing things part way through and, and it's, yeah good thing we we don't have jess on because she'd have a ton of series to complain about that's for sure mm -hmm. uh like lost metal for the uk edition where they just changed the cover style Really? I th don't they all match for the cover style? They, they the added a dog bone outline to the covers. And so, uh, just, um, yeah. A I'll, dog I'll, bone? Yes, yes, seriously, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, it, that's what it looks like. I'll, I'll put it on screen for the, the viewers, but uh, Jess is really upset that she can never get her complete uh, Mistborn Era 2 series because now the only Lost Metal will have just a weird dog bone outline. You can't unsee it once you see the dog bone. Nothing says Mistborn like a dog bone. <laughs> I, I think mean, it's... <laughs> ten soon. It's true. This is not a Cosmere episode, but we might <laughs> we might talk about some uh, Skyward uh, stuff maybe awesome. a little bit. But 
Uh, but we're here to talk about Bastille versus the Evil Librarians. Uh, we should probably start with any non-spoilery things before we get right. into spoilers, because we will get into spoilers, because... Yay! See, that's that's the thing. Brandon streams, you, you can't get into the spoilers, but here, we, we can dig into the spoilers and what's mm. going on. Sweet. Uh, the things people really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to pitch any of your non-branded books to the audience before we get started? Sure. Yeah. Um, the one that I recommend, especially if you're coming from Skyward, I don't have any middle grade if you're coming from Alcatraz, so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you are a child, probably you should wait a little while. My stuff's a little more, even my way, it's a little more adult. Um, but the one that I recommend coming from Skyward is Sinking City. It's a, it's about a magical mafia in Venice, and it's like the son of the magical godfather. And that he's dealing with like a traitor in their magical mafia. And it's it's super fun and adventure and people like leap in buildings in Venice and stuff. So yeah. I, I can confirm because I've, I've read Sinking City. Yay. It's very good. It was very fun. Ooh, I need you. to like continue the series. Yeah, and I read the, I read those with Megan Walker. Right. Is my co-writer on those. Uh, we have them, but we we have a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> too many books uh but we do we do have them and i think uh we bought godfire as well mm, no yeah. maybe the first yeah. one in that series because godfire is not the first one right if you're more into the epic fantasy um it's under pen name kara witter because i write those with megan and with um, my friend lauren we and so we don't put three names on the books we used a, a pen name for those but yeah godfire is my epic fantasy it's not stormlight it's more like classic epic fantasy okay <laughs> but cool do you want to tell us about how how you got into writing this and how the process of it kind of worked when when you started, maybe? Yeah. Um, so Brandon asked me to co-write a book with him years and years ago. And at the time, it was sort of like this vague, we'll do something. Um, and we had talked about potentially some Skyward books, but it was all sort of unsure. And then I didn't hear anything for, it was probably about a year. And finally I texted him and I was like, just so I know, like, is this a thing? Is this still on your radar? Is this happening? I mean, things just, Dragon Steel's got a lot going on. So you just kind of never know what's still happening and what isn't. Um, and he texted me back and he said, well, that's still like, I still want to do this with you. I don't know when that will happen, but do you want to write the last book in the Alcatraz series? You can take some time and think about it. Think about it. And you can get back to me. And I was like, um, yes, yes, I want to do that. Cause I love that series. It's one of my favorites of his. I, and so I was really excited. Um, and at the time he had written his way into the book and he'd written about 20,000 words, about nine chapters. Um, and then just sort of written himself into this corner. And he, he was like, I just don't know. I, I don't think the voice is working. I don't know where the plot is going. I don't have time to deal with this basically because he had other things he needed to do. Um, and so he sent it all to me and I looked at it and he was right. He had written himself into a corner. I ended up cutting about half of what he had written really because it was just sort of going nowhere. Um, and the fun part about that was I got to keep all of his good jokes. I like pulled all the stuff that was good out of those chapters and like repurposed them as I went along. Um, but I, he gave me those nine chapters. And then he also gave me um, his outline, which was basically like, this is how the series ends, right? Not like the climax of the Bastille book, but like, this is sort of the afterward stuff of like where, what happens with the magic and all of that. Oh, okay. um, and so then I read through the five books and I got to outline Bastille. And like, basically I went through and I made notes of all the things that I wanted. Like we hadn't seen some things from before. I'm trying to do this the spoiler free version. I know, um, I know. There was a lot of things we hadn't seen before that, or that we had seen before that hadn't come up again for books and books. And so I got to bring some of those things in and that was really fun. And then I wrote the first half of the book and I sent it to Brandon and he read it and he had some notes um, and he hadn't even seen my outline. And so he was like, I'm excited to see where you're going with this. And then I wrote the second half of the book. So. So there was, there was not really like a plot outline for this book really at all. I had one. Yeah, sorry, you you him. didn't get a plot outline <laughs> mm -hmm. from Brandon no, at all. No, like there was no, no like plot grand plan from Brandon. There. I wrote my own plot outline mm -hmm. and then he didn't see it. With Skyward, we went over those outlines several times. Um, with this one, I didn't send it to him. I just sent him the words um, and he looked at that. So. I, I am astonished because there are so many things that I'm like, wow, that was such good foreshadowing. And like, and you were just all picking from earlier stuff in the books and just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. oh, these are the mm -hmm. promises and doing it later. 
Yeah, no, it was super fun to go through and be like, oh, he promised this, he promised that. And like Alcatraz, there's just a million throwaway things, so I can't follow up on everything. Right, but I yeah. got to go through and be like, what are my favorite things? What do I wish the, the book would follow up on? And go in and play with them. <sighs> so, so fun. Which, you're the one writing it. It's your prerogative. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is... I am just shocked. Uh, maybe, maybe we need to get into spoilers to get into some details yeah. there, because there's... Mm -hmm. So, we're, we're talking about spoilers. Uh, it's a fast read. Uh... <laughs> There, there are five other books before this one, so uh, thank you if you're listening to this episode, because it's, it's been a hot bit since 2007 when this started. I'm shocked, like, with the straw puns and the gack. Like, I, I, I loved the gack, uh, and I completely forgot, because I knew Alcatraz said gack, but mm -hmm. I forgot in book one that there's like, oh, no, actual creatures named gacks that don't like straw. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like... Yeah. Wow, you just you just fit that in uh, there, and yeah, I I can't believe that that wa just wasn't an outline thing. That is just it was actually a random note from Karen Alstrom in the continuity. She has these great spreadsheets with all of the like these are all the powers and these are all the lenses and this is where mm -hmm. they all appear, which was very helpful. Yeah, um, and in her notes about the gag, she had just a parenthetical, it would be nice to finally see one of these. And I was like, it would be nice to finally see one of those. Um, and so I put it, since it was kind of a random thing, I put it in sort of the fun and game section of the book. And I just had that in my outline. And when I got to that chapter, um, I was, I'm trying to match Brandon's style because I feel like that's what the audience wants, right? Mm -hmm. And so I got there and I realized I have not put enough puns in this book. It's a thing Brandon does that I don't do and haven't done. And so instead of go back and fix it, I just dumped them all in that chapter. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And so it just it was sort of a coincidence. That actually wasn't in my outline. It was just sort of a, what am I going to do with the GAC? Well, Pun I battle. Puns. puns. And then I went back later and added a like thing about wordplay so that it was foreshadowed at all. <laughs> I mean, the GAC really it saved the counts. day, honestly. And then, okay, so that wasn't the case because I didn't know how to end the book. My plot outline was like, and then they fight Biblia in, and sometimes that works. Sometimes I get there and I'm like, and then they fight Biblia in, and it works. And this one, it was like, and then they fight Biblia in, and it did not work. At all. <laughs> so, when I turned in the full book to Brandon, I my email said, this ending is not working at all. I need you to tell me how this book ends. Um, and so I turned it in, I mean, it had an ending, but this was clearly not the ending of the book and I knew it, but like Brandon's my co-writer, it's his job to have ideas. So I can right. do things poorly and then tell him I need to know how to fix them. Um, and then he went and talked to Emily. I actually heard from Isaac. Uh, Isaac was the one who gave me the notes on that and had the idea to bring the gack back around and use the puns and the, the whole straw man thing. But yeah, the straw so that, man that was thing. Isaac's the straw idea. man. Yeah, I That's thought good. it was a really good one. Yeah, I'm the worst because 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 it because it connects with Alcatraz's so character. I, yeah, I, uh -huh. I enjoyed it. Um, and then like breaking gravity, that was another thing from earlier books that Katie mm -hmm. mentioned that I'd completely forgot in our yeah, last that episode. One was actually in Brandon's notes. That was one oh, of the few okay. things that I had from the middle. Was like they go to the tower and he breaks gravity. Like that was it. They go to the tower. He breaks gravity. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> it it, it, was that like all Brandon told you about the spire and stuff? Oh yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because we were like saying like oh it would have been nice to have like more lore on the world spire but like that 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 checks out then. I yeah. like, in the book. A, a lot of bad stuff happens to the tower. A lot of pieces break off. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> probably that's where migraines come from. That'd sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you said. There were Biblia Den chapters? There, there were. So <laughs> what? what happened in... So oh, in some of these chapters, I'm going to tell you a story that makes me sad. So okay. there were like nine chapters and the last four, I think I cut. One of them was a Biblia Den perspective that was basically Biblia Den chills in his Biblia Den blimp. <laughs> <laughs> it was... <laughs> stuff and i was like yeah this is not working so i got it um and then there was also they had gone to like this safe house the very end was they had gone to this safe house and were randomly fighting this alive end for no reason because he had written himself in a corner that was the chapter that made him quit um and so that just went but there was a section where they get out of the library and they like 
they have this, I think this is still in the book where they sort of have this, like, they're sitting on this like grassy hill and they have this conversation and then they got on a bus <laughs> and I loved, I loved the free King Murderers take the bus chapter. <laughs> oh, I kept it. I kept it. And like, Brandon was like, you didn't cut enough of my stuff. And I was like, but I like it. You're just over critical of your own stuff. It's fine. And then we sent it to the editor and the betas and they were all like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> So we had to cut my bus chapter. It was Brandon's bus darlings. chapter that I was. I think there might have been two chapters on the bus. <laughs> Did you and reuse the con- huh? Did you reuse the conversations that were on the bus? Yeah. So the conversation where um, on the island where Bastille grabs Alcatraz by his collar and she like yells at him. That was on half of that conversation used to be on the bus that was sort of what happened and then um so I combined those two scenes and that worked much better because the other feedback that I was getting there was Alcatraz is too whiny and it was because I let him have two whiny chapters instead of just the one whiny meltdown and so it it's a better book because of it but I was still sad I loved that bus yeah yeah that's (laughs) it's the kill your darlings yeah Yeah. in this case it was Brandon's darlings that I adopted that you liked (laughs) yeah I liked it but I mean pacing wise it was not a good idea but that was the one I was sad about not the Biblia and chapters. <laughs> I think I think the pacing turned out quite good in the book. Yay. Like we we like go library, we're like launching across continents, and then we're we're like there. You you can blaze through this book real quick. But mm. then again, I'm used to Mistborn and Stormlight books, so all these books yeah. you can blaze through really quick. <laughs> yep. That that was like the big piece of my reaction is like it's just I'm used to one thing, and this is very good, but just much smaller in scope mm-hmm. like okay yeah. like i need to adjust expectations mm-hmm. like this yeah. is very yeah. good yeah were, were there any other biblia done chapters or was it just him chilling on his blimp <laughs> it was just him chib- chilling on his blimp i think it was just the one chapter well that he did not do anything <laughs> i have to know because like this book is written from by Bastille from Bastille's perspective. So was it just Bastille imagining what Biblioden was going on? No, it was actually Biblioden's perspective. We like jumped to Biblioden's <laughs> perspective and had him monologue on his plan. <laughs> I mean, in Brandon's defense, he knew it wasn't working so much that he quit writing the book. Right, right, yeah. right. Like, yeah. He thought this was good. He was just trying to find it. Which is kind of yeah. what you do. Well, yeah, especially in first yeah. draft. And I feel like that's Brandon's strategy of like, I'll jump few points and see how this goes. Maybe it'll yeah. be better. <laughs> you I know? don't know. But in this case, I would guess it was this book doesn't have a plot yet. Maybe if I get in the villain's head, I'll find it. And the answer okay, was right. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't know what the plot is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> you, you made it seem like everything was uh, like planned uh i think one of our critiques was like wow biblian didn't have a lot to do and like what's going on with biblian chapters and like well that wouldn't help (laughs) no no it did not help (laughs) uh but yeah you you made it seem like it it was all just totally planned uh and made it seem effortless and i think we all agree you nailed bastille's voice is so good that makes me happy and i i in particularly loved like because bastille obviously has feelings for alcatraz at this point in the in the book but the dichotomy of president day bastille who is married to alcatraz like pretending her younger self wasn't having feelings (laughs) and then like well maybe i was wrong maybe i did have feelings or it's like the the scene where it's like oh like my face got really hot. The sun was shining. Like, who knows what was going on? <laughs> My face is really red because of the sun. Yeah. yeah. Your, your romance always is on point. Uh, that I was think. my, like, one request for the book was, you know, we agreed I was going to finish the book for him. And I was like, can I please, 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 please put a middle, middle, middle grade size romance in it? And Brandon was like, I mean, the reader already knows they're married. And I was like... <laughs> Brandon. I saw a forum <laughs> post that was like, maybe Bastille's married to a different Smedry. So it wasn't <laughs> like that would have been the twist, but I don't know about that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and then when I turned in the book, my only request, I, cause I don't, I don't, it's a co-written project. It's Brandon's world. I don't have a lot of ego about anything that I did. And so I was like, look, 
we can do whatever. We can cut whole things. I'm not married to any of it, except don't cut my kissing or my flying sharks. Those were my only two things. I was like, this is what's important to me. Kissing and the flying sharks. Well, if Brandon wanted the gravity to break, you got to have a cool thing right. that happens with it. So the yeah, flying right. shark is great for that. You know, like you got to have that. And you can see the seals was punching it mm-hmm. you know, right? or punching me. Yeah. Know, either way. <laughs> That is so funny. Just hearing Brandon's first draft things where it's like, I he knows it's bad. Like, yeah. it, it's mm-hmm. nice to know that he's not just a perfect story writing machine. It's like, here's no, 40 no, books. No. Here you go. They're all perfect. And it's like, no, no, no. He has to revise them. And that's a he very important He has to revise part. them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Especially like when he discovery writes them, especially yeah. then. Yeah. But like, I mean, I think always, but definitely then. Yeah, because all these are discovery written, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of like sharks, because sharks are on the cover art. Mm. Um, there's also art inside the book. How was it working with Haley Lazo, who has now illustrated all of the books? Haley is awesome. She is. She's just a fantastic artist and a fantastic person. Um, I didn't get to work with her directly, really. Um, I took my cue from Brandon on this when the chapters that I had had things in brackets that were notes to the illustrator for like the textual jokes and things that would rely on the art. And so I continued that through and like basically what Isaac told me, Isaac is Brandon's art director. Um, What Isaac told me was anywhere you can think of an illustration you would like to see, just leave us a note. And so the book had probably maybe six or 7,000 words in addition to the words of the book that were the bracketed text of like, here's like, maybe not that many, but there was a lot. Right. Um, and then we cut the brackets out before it went to production. Um, but it was just really fun to be able to like sort of envision the way some of these things would look on the page or like have Alcatraz write a note here, like Bastille did and Alcatraz's books, things like that. <laughs> it was really fun. And then Haley and Isaac went through and made a list of all the illustrations they wanted to see once the book was done and added those too. So it was kind of this big collaboration of what would be cool visually. Um, and then Isaac and Haley worked out like exactly where the illustrations would go and which ones would be like multiple pages and which ones would be. And I think they just did a fantastic job. I think their art is just beautiful. Isaac and I had a meeting where when the art was like half done, probably. So a lot of it was like sketches and things. And we went through and he was, I was giving him feedback, but I think all of my feedback was, yeah, it's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and I had actual feedback. On like, What's great. I want to see more. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved like Bastille like flying out and like i have a perfect landing uh there that's that was excellent and that illustration just really helped that joke and like bastille's happy place got to see that Mm -hmm. twice uh and oh my one of my favorite illustrations i mean the literary literary license (laughs) illustration is perfect the whole concept of the literary license I, i i i love that was one of Brandon's jokes that I rescued from a chapter that wasn't working because I thought oh, I loved perfect. that one. That Excellent. one and the, the um, Bastille's Happy Place was another one that Excellent. I was like, we got to keep this. That's yeah. great. Maybe this isn't the spot for it, but I'm keeping yeah, this exactly. joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like the illustrations at the end of Alcatraz and Bastille at their wedding and then the railing yeah. breaking. Oh, I, I loved it. So that- good chapter it was like we need this epilogue and we're gonna put it at the wedding okay sure but then i was like what does a free kingdom or wedding look like and like Brandon i don't know was make like, it up i don't yeah. know and i was like okay so we're not gonna see very much of it then <laughs> <laughs> i mean you gotta keep it snappy middle grade book you gotta, ke- gotta right, keep it snappy right? it's yeah. totally cool they just stand on a balcony <laughs> yeah like well we got we got the important thing from a smedry wedding which is the spouse getting the talent right. of yes the spouse yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's well i don't think it's that's always what alcatraz same. would say bastille would say alcatraz broke it so <laughs> right it's true it's a good point i i just love hearing the process stuff of just like well hey, all right well uh, i'm not gonna make that part up we'll just i'll, I'll write around it, and just write around it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 perfect uh and and it was interesting hearing you and Brandon. Uh, obviously, they they did a stream where they they talked about this for the first hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll put it up uh, on the up. Yeah, this direction. Yes, upper right of the <laughs> YouTube, uh, which doesn't match what these uh, guys are seeing at all. But that's fine. I I got it correct. Uh, 
that yeah you don't correct things in alcatraz books you just you just right. mock them uh yeah. and that was that was very interesting it makes it so fun to write because i just get to mock myself instead of having to deal with myself when i do things wrong you know <laughs> like yeah. the the whole um scene with is it draw in and the gr- the glowering that was yeah, i think so that, that was one where i was like i i don't have another word for this what is she doing well She's glowering. glowering again. <laughs> we it's can like, do oh, this. this is the I'm not only supposed to use this word this. too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 the that's the gimmick of the book. Mm-hmm. But... Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so did did you write magma lava? Like like there's there was a magma lava thing. Was was that a c- correction that you did you write it and then someone corrected you and you put it put it in there or did you realize is writing so, it? Yeah. Brandon had written magma. I did not catch it. One of my members of my writing group caught it and said, this is not right. And then of course, like, I'm not going to go back and fix it. <laughs> like, so then it turned into, you know, I mean, librarians told you that I think is what, where we landed. <laughs> just always, it's just such a great, I love librarians yeah. told you that because anything like physics, anything, I can just be like, well, you learned that from librarians. It's not true. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> but, but is it, still magma because they're still underground right so they're all underground right? all the whole library is i think yeah. but it is library. open to the air above yeah, that's true that's so true. Mm. Hey, geologists put your comments below that if you're in a cave system and right. magma slash lava goes through it is it magma or is it lava okay mm-hmm. that's the question i'm sure they're probably knows. all librarians it's lies that's true <laughs> <laughs> don't trust the geologists that's yeah, true. That's true. Uh, that reminds me of another gimmick that I really enjoyed of just Bastille explaining Hushlander things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I love that. Like, it reminded me of a series from Fortune Events and like Lemony Snicket explaining <laughs> words. I'm like, it, it was the right vibes. The police. I really liked it. <laughs> that was, what, 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 were some of those branded things or were, did you come up with those? Um. Unless they were in the first two chapters, I think those were mine. Cool. Very little of the what happens in the library is mine, except we actually, the book starts in a slightly different place. It started with her running down the tower with Alcatraz over her shoulder before. Um, and it was actually the editor at Tor asked us to back it up. Um, mm. So I added everything that happens before that, her waking up in the Penguinator and all of that. Mm. And I think that was a really good call. But everything else in the library, almost without exception, like I revised it a little bit, but mostly all of that is Brandon. So if there's any in there, that would have been him. But I did add the, in my first draft, I'm really bad at describing what people are wearing. And so I turned in my first draft and Isaac said, so for art, we can't have Bastille spend this entire book in her pajamas <laughs> because I that hadn't actually bad. had her change clothes ever. I just didn't ever mention what she was wearing, basically. Um, and so we also added that section where they find the catalog of clothes and like the, the police stuff and things got added also. <laughs> but that part was me. That was, that was good. Yeah. I mean, if she wouldn't look as good on the cover if uh, right. she's just wearing No, he pajamas. said that. And I was like, you're right. I didn't actually picture what she was wearing ever. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> yep. Yep. Do you have things? I'm sure I'm sure you have thoughts of what you would have wanted to fit in, but just couldn't fit into the book. You know, I think I put everything into this book that I wanted to put into it because it's just so random that kind of like 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 the the world is so chaotic that it was kind of like anything I wanted I could put in. So I think the only thing is that bus. I'm sad about the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have kept the bus. There was no way to keep it. It was boring. Deleted scene on Brandon's site? We do have a lore-based question for you. Oh, yes. I may or may not have an answer. Especially if you wrote it four years ago. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The last time I touched it was last December. I did. They actually... I had not heard about this book for like three years. (laughs) And No, that's not true because I, I had done a revision. It had been probably two years since I had touched the book and I get this letter for the, 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 um, editorial letter from Tor when I'm in the middle of writing read on. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. I was just like, I just emailed. I, and like, if, if, for those of you who don't remember, I wrote those things under this insane crunch. I was on this like deadline. I was like scheduled to the minute. It was insane. I had to get through read on. I had to get through Evershore. And like, I emailed my agent and I was like, tell them no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I cannot do it. So then they very graciously were like, okay. I mean, it wasn't Tor's fault. They don't have anything to do with the novellas. They didn't know. Yeah. Um, and they very graciously put that off for about four months so that I could have a sane brain and with which to revise it. And so the last time I touched it was last December, but that's still been like, what, nine months, 10 months? Yeah. So, so I have a question. When you get the editorial letter, do they like want you to work on it like immediately? Is that how that works? Yeah, it was please turn this in in three weeks. Ah, OK. Gotcha. Oh. Yeah. That's gotcha. how New York works is that like when you're working with a New York publisher, you, you will hear nothing for nine months, a year. Nothing will happen. And then they will send you something and they will say, we need this next weekend. And it's that's, the hurry up and wait, I guess. Hurry I up and like, like now, right now you will do this. And you, sometimes you have noticed that things are coming and sometimes they just show up and it's like, we need this tomorrow. You know, like here's your, when we used to do the final pass pages on, um, it's where they've got the book all laid out mm-hmm. and you mark it up and they used to do those all in print. They'd mail them to you and it would be like, okay, you have four days and then overnight it, you know, <laughs> like it's nuts. <laughs> But yeah. this is why we have agents. So someone else can go deliver the bad news when it's like, no, I can't do that and remain a same individual who can write you more books in the future. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's good to know because I'm like, yeah. oh, a letter, like you probably have some time. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, three yeah. weeks maybe, but if you're doing read-on, yeah, you don't have any time. No, I didn't. And I was like, I cannot touch this until October at the earliest, the end. <laughs> end of yeah. story. I had to turn in ever sure first Mm -hmm. but it was just so like of course right like i had all the time in the world at every moment leading up to that so that's the moment it arrives of course of course (laughs) so the slant viewers lenses they show you other people's perspectives perspectives Mm -hmm. (laughs) it feels like that what that means shifts sometimes during the course of the book in the sense that sometimes it means physically right and sometimes it means like metaphorically right like Mm -hmm. they're like thoughts and perspectives yeah Yeah. no that definitely shifts during the book okay so like that was all intentional and it's like we're like yeah like what like the the mechanics nerds in us like (laughs) this is like no we were all different i think no i could see that i think Mm -hmm. i felt like that was acceptable in an alcatraz world where shades of meaning and like wordplay and stuff are part of the world And so like, it's sort of like a play on it where like, sometimes it means I see literally what I, what you see from your eyes. And sometimes it's more like, I see what you think when you look at me, your thoughts and like, that's not super hard magic for sure. (laughs) It's a little bit um, of a stretch, but I felt like what I got out of it was worth the stretch to me. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Decide if it was. Yeah. I I also like um, you brought back the oculator duel. Mm-hmm. the first book and then like the slant furious lenses that was a cool scene that that was and, like those... knowing you were stretching like the wording of what's like like uh, perspectives like yeah like yeah that, that makes sense yeah and that, that was one of those things that when i was going through i was like we never see another one of these it's like this huge deal in book one and then it's never mentioned again so i thought that would be really cool to bring back around and have it yeah. because it's it's mm-hmm. all set up where alcatraz doesn't do it right he just watches his mentor mm-hmm. do it right so it's sort of set up this promise um that then hadn't been fulfilled so i was really excited plus it gave me an action thing to do yay action yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you needed an action idea let's go yep <laughs> i'm surprised you didn't Raffo us. <laughs> Wait, this is coincidence. We this was not planned. We all independently chose to wear this shirt. Yeah. <laughs> True story. There was a time, I think, on the podcast with Marvin that we got a th- Marvin and I were wearing it and we got a th- the third person to change, but we didn't. Yeah, that was me. Oh, that was, that was you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> like, Who changed your shirt right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like getting into those shades meaning like that does make so much sense because we see that with the talents mm-hmm. Attica right. loses his humanity and Shasta yeah. like loses her relationship with her son. And yeah. Like, we're already sort of stretching that literalness. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was more just confused and I'm like, ah, it's a Brandon magic thing. Cool. Like that's, that's, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just accept it. It's, it's, it's an Alcatraz book. It can be silly. I, I don't need yeah. to worry about it. Speaking about Attica. Ooh. How much of that, like, was that in Brandon's outline that, or was that something you came up with? 
him being was in the lens. That yeah. was Brandon's. That was that he gave me a like, this is what actually happened, right? Like Alcatraz mm-hmm. thinks he was just murdered. Really, what they were doing is forging this lens and he's in the lens. And then um it was Brandon's idea. He said, like, we need to justify Alcatraz really feeling like he could never finish this. And like it has to still feel like a tragedy, but also not be like a total tragedy, like the end of book five. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was his, he said, uh, just leave him in the lens, right? Like his dad needs to be dead in most ways because otherwise like then Alcatraz could just go ahead and write the book, right? If he gets a really happy ending at the end. Right. Well, that, that figures that Brandon would bring the characters back from the dead. That's, that's, that's <laughs> pretty <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but I mean, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think our only issue uh, was that it, it took a bit of agency away from Alcatraz and Bastille at the end to just have Attica yeah. in there, right? Which is a little Yeah, tricky. I could see that. Yeah. I actually did a lot of work on that scene um, because even after I wrote the second ending that was not my, I just put an ending on this book, but when I had the whole plan, it was still very much like how to make Bastille have enough agency without taking like we sort of have these two characters that both need to have even though it's Bastille's book Alcatraz also needs to have an ending here Mm -hmm. and so the balance on like who's doing what and who's what is whose idea and all of that was something that I worked on a lot that got a lot of revision to try to get that balance right kind of reminds me a bit of FM and Jorgen where it's like Mm, FM's the protagonist but like the person doing a lot of the action is Jorgen yeah. and it's kind of like that with Bastille and obviously like yeah. Alcatraz is the main character but yeah yeah it was very similar actually and yeah. it, like for for Bastille it was easy for the first half of the book because Alcatraz is just a wreck <laughs> he's not going to do anything she doesn't tell him to do or in some cases like put the lenses on his face let's go you know um <laughs> And so that wasn't a problem there, but once and the problem there was the balance of how whiny he was like, we want to not make him totally miserable to read, right? <laughs> we want to feel empathy for him. And if somebody, a character whines too much, we lose empathy. And so that I was working on that balance for the first half of the book. And then the second half of the book, it was like how to like, let him come back into being a hero without undermining her arc. And so that needed a lot of revision and a lot of like toying with to get the balance. I do really like the balance of Alcatraz being a wreck during the first book. Yeah, we finally got it. It's it's the self-loathing arc. I love them. They're great. Make the characters suffer. It's like you are a child. You just went through terrible things. You should be affected. You should should not be just doing okay and rebounding after this. So I, I also thought you got a good balance there. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think he was too whiny, but uh, I, I can see how that is a very careful balance to to mm-hmm. do that. And in early drafts, he definitely was. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of some of it. Like you get that when the characters repeat themselves too much, even if in real life, it would make sense for them to say these things more than once. It You want to get it in the right place and not so like the reader. Because if the reader starts to feel like I already heard this, then they start to get bored and they start to get annoyed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the, the whole like verisimilitude versus reality. Exactly. With- yeah dialogue yeah yeah Yeah, i feel like that's a thing that people get issues with with like kaladin and stormlight where it's just like Mm -hmm. it maybe feels a bit too similar even though that's very realistic Mm -hmm. but yeah yeah not that we're talking about stormlight but one of the things i love about the way he does that with kaladin and i'm behind in stormlight so i haven't read the most recent stuff but (laughs) one of the things i love about it is kaladin has growth and change but he doesn't fix the problem which is how it is for people Mm -hmm. with depression yeah. And so yeah. like, I get why people get annoyed, but I love it because I feel like, like the temptation in the fiction is to have the growth change the like brain, you know, but it doesn't. The arc um, fix. Awesome. It, I'm at the end of the book. So everything's better. Ta-da! <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Now I don't have depression anymore, but the rest of us still have to live with ours. So yeah. 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 But like it was, you also balanced like Alcatraz's, like ending with his uh epilogue and bastille's epilogue like that was good uh because yeah. you, you said brandon wrote the uh alcatraz epilogue yeah the alcatraz like letter at the end, end of the note says, i forget brandon, what it's called yeah he wrote i think both of those the one at the beginning and at the end the alcatraz mm. ones yeah. Did you write those first so you had those the whole time or did he write those the i think i had them I would have to go back and look to be sure, but I think I had those. Mm. I think so. 
Oh, after well, the one at the the one at the start was best too. Yeah. Did yeah, yeah. Alcatraz have one at the beginning too, or just at the end? Just at just the at end. the end. Just at the end. Yeah, yeah. I think I had that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He might have written it when he handed it over to me. That mm. sounds like probably what happened. <laughs> probably, probably uh, give you something to shoot for. Yeah, and just like so that it's in Alcatraz's voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. yeah, and you said that um, he had laid out the magic stuff, like the state of the magic at the end, which is like yeah, all, the, like giving the, the magic talents to everyone. talents going to everybody, and what's going on with like the Incarna power and all of that. The like implementation of the way it like shows up during the book was mine, but mm-hmm. like at least after the very beginning. But the concept of what was going on was all in his original notes. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's what you got to work with. <laughs> yeah, yep. I had notes and we had like probably a 30 minute conversation about it. And then I took it and wrote the first half. 30 minute conversation. Brandon. Well, I mean, that's like two Brandon questions. So I guess that's not that much. All well, things considered. <laughs> when actually like when when we're brainstorming, it's like I ask a question. He gives me an answer. It is like the most dense 30 minutes mm. i need to start recording them because afterwards i need like the 30 minutes to talk to brandon and then i need an hour to sit down and furiously type everything i remember that he said because it will just be this like avalanche of all of this great stuff um and we had another one of those we had that one and then after i turned in the bad ending um we had another one um where i talked about it with isaac and then i was just like i just need no that's not true it was before i wrote the second half i think is actually when it happened um that i was just like i need some ideas for like the librarians show up and what's going to happen and he came up with the thing with the kittens um and have them categorize the kittens um i think i had a list of things i was like here are some things we could use and he was like oh the kittens the librarians do this and also um giving the librarians the talents and having bastille like I know how to do this. I have prepared for this my whole life. That <laughs> moment was also his ideas from one of those sessions, which I thought was fantastic yeah. and really like shaped. Not the like final climax part, but the part before mm-hmm. that. So Jancy, what was your favorite part to write? But Ooh. I'm giving you a condition here. Your favorite part aside from the kiss. Uh, aside from because that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My favorite yeah. part, I'm going to have two answers. The flying sharks was just so fun. And actually the cover, um, Isaac asked me, what would you like to see on the cover? And I said, obviously the sharks. And he's like, yeah, that's what I want on the cover too. But um, the branding for the new paperbacks, which it has the same art as the paperback, right? They did a different design, but the same art. So we had to stick with that. And the branding for the paperback was Alcatraz and company and the, the arch villain for the book. And I was like, oh, then we lose the sharks. And Isaac was like, yeah, we're gonna lose the sharks. That's really sad. What they actually ended up doing was pitching them both to the artists. And the artist was like, sharks. (laughs) So we got the sharks back and it made me so happy. Um, My other answer to that question is my favorite part was getting to make fun of Brandon all over. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It was so much fun to make fun of Brandon Sanderson, the author, make fun of Alcatraz, who is also Brandon Sanderson, make fun of like that ending to book five. And the fact that they, that note, they buried it all the way back behind the reader's guide and 50% of the audience didn't even find it. It's true. It's true though. It's really, it's quite funny. It was so much fun just to be able to pour that all in the book and just like mock. I mean, I mocked myself too, but like, Mm -hmm. you know, it was fun. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 on the level of like mocking the book two scholastic cover for being in space, which they did in book. They <laughs> mocked that in book four. Like, oh, that's yeah. why we went to space in that book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Do, have we seen the paperback cover art? I don't know if we have for this book, but yes, yeah, so you've probably seen for, it. For, for the Bastille? cover design. Yeah. Oh, the cover Bastille? design? No, yeah. I haven't seen one. Oh, OK. Oh. I see. It'll be the same art. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Because this actually is the artist that did the others. Oh, right. Right. Justin right, right, right. something. I'm forgetting his name. Um, Haley did the other covers for the original hard covers, and but she didn't do the cover for this one. She just did the interior. I thought someone else did the covers for the other yeah, ones. Yeah, I don't think it's it's like I think it's Scott Brundage did the covers. We we did we did some other I, I made this mistake and I think I got corrected as well. Oh, is it not Haley? I thought it was I don't think it I, I, don't think it I thought it was oh, Haley okay. too. <laughs> I'm just pleased that the covers feel like even though it's a different artist, like it feels nice and similar enough. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I think he did a really nice job. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's so many it blending says. of styles. Gotta blend the cover style, gotta blend your writing style with Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, 
all the blending. Uh, really, really a team effort to finish up these mm-hmm. Alcatraz books. Uh, yeah. And even more so than like um, the novellas, which obviously there were a lot of people working on those too. And I was working with Isaac and things for the covers and stuff. But this more than that, there was a lot of like, I mean, I had ideas from Karen and from Emily and from Isaac and from Brandon and like all of it just sort of melded together and worked together to make the story. Mm -hmm. Did did you find it? I have an answer. Okay. Um, The jacket art is by Scott Grundage. Oh, I did not know that. Jacket designed by Isaac Stewart. Shocking. So to kind of... This is not the only thing you've written by with Brandon. You also wrote Cytoverse novellas. Mm-hmm. And so if you had to swap two characters, one from Alcatraz and one from the Cytoverse, and put them into the other setting, Ooh. which would they be and what shenanigans would they get up to? That is a very good question. It... I think it would be hilarious to take Jorgen and put him in a free kingdom or world and watch his head explode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that who would I pull the other way? Oh man, he would die. This he would, he would be dead. He would be dead. <laughs> he would not be able to handle it. Oh, someone um, write that fanfic though. That's good. That's quality. I feel like he and Bastille would be friends though, because yes. she yeah. does not appreciate the shenanigans either. <laughs> so I feel like, I feel like they would be buddies. Um, Okay, who would I pull the other way? Oh, that's a hard question. I feel like Kaz, because it would be super fun to do space battles in which people get lost constantly. That would and be if he's really cytonic, fun. Then he can yeah. teleport and be lost exactly. that way. And yeah. get lost. And he'd just end up all over the place. And that would be a really fun intersection of magic to play with. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't even need to change very much, honestly. <laughs> like that fit really well. Yeah. Yeah. You you also announced on the uh Brandon stream that there are more Cytiverse novels. There are. We're doing a trilogy with Delacorte. It's all official. So Excellent. um I have an outline but what i don't have is a copy of defiant and so (laughs) they're happening after defiant and so i have i have the defiant outline so i know generally what's going to happen but the way brandon works and this is the way i write too so like i get it is that the outline is a theory of what might happen in the book but then sometimes he gets into it and what you actually get is something entirely different (laughs) so i can can only rely on that outline so much um and so to know where the characters are at and where the world is at and what like the end state of the Spencer story is, I have to wait until that's revised. So in the next couple of months, hopefully I will have a copy of that. And then I think the plan is for me to start writing possibly as soon as December. So I'm really excited. Nice. Do you know or want to tell us or are you able to tell us who the points of, points of view characters that you're thinking of are? So there has been some debate about that. Um, there was one character that I was I was planning to do, and then Brandon was like, maybe I need to save that person for this other thing. And so we're still debating it. Mm. So I can't announce that. But I can tell you it's, it's our Skyward Flight people that you know and love are the point of view characters. So that that part I can tell you. But some of it's still in flux. Like I'm not, I know between two characters, which one the book will be about. I don't know. It will be one or the other. Would, <laughs> so. would the whole trilogy be by that perspective or would it go like no. diff- each book a different person? Is- my current plan, and I don't know if this will survive contact <laughs> with the actual right. drafting. My current plan is to do two perspectives per book and have them rotate. So some people will get a two book arc. Some people will just start in book one and just be in book one. Um, and so that would give me what? One, two, three, four perspectives total. So that's my plan, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Cause isn't the 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 thing with outlines is, oh, that's a great plan, but uh now I've come up with something better usually. Uh, yeah. Or like I wrote my way in and I realized that didn't totally make sense. Mm. Like it made sense in my head, but then when I try to write it, it the arc doesn't work or the you know, and so sometimes it's better ideas, sometimes it's just this idea isn't broken and now I gotta come up with a better idea. Um and then when I'm dealing with Brandon and what he sees for the setting and stuff, sometimes it's like what he wants changes. And so then my plans also need to change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really exciting though, to hear about more, yeah. more novels. We're excited uh, and, to get back into it. Cause I imagine Defiant will close a lot of 
like it'll close up a lot of things but it's mm-hmm. cool yeah. to that it's not the end of the world right like, and it the the process for outlining that was a lot very similar to the process for Bastille. If I got to go through the series, I didn't reread the whole thing, which I need to do before I write. So I should probably get on that. Um, but I got to go through the series and be like, what cool hooks do we have here that Brandon didn't really follow up on? And so right. I got to pull several of those and be like, okay, now we're going to really dig into this where he just sort of like skimmed it. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be it's good. like, I'm almost more excited for those than for defiant. <laughs> Because, like, Defy, like, we kind of know, well, we don't really know what's going to happen because it's a Brandon book and he always surprises Anything can us. happen, yeah. But, like, it's just, like, it's it's the shiny new thing. It's like, ooh, and it's so far away that anything could happen. Well, like, we know Defiant's going to close the core conflict with the superiority and Delvers, right. presumably, right? Like, that's... Yeah. I mean, that that's what has to end, basically. But, like, there will be other conflicts and stuff through any number of races and the great thing with cyberverse is you can just add whatever new aliens you want whenever really like and there's a lot of them that he hasn't done a lot with yet yeah. that could be played with yep and my intention we'll see what he does in defiant it depends on how much he closes the loop on some of these things but like i have all of these side characters that i started arcs for that he's not going to have space to do that from spence's perspective and so my intention is to pick up those and continue them Awesome. We know you can't talk about the post of stuff because yeah. it's all super in flux. And even yeah, if it was solid, flux. you probably wouldn't want to I mention can't. it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But we have to ask. The we question. have to try and wheedle, mm-hmm. you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys could tell me what would you like to see in more books? Because like I said, stuff is all in flux. So I can't guarantee I would take any, but I am totally on 17 shard listening to what everybody's saying. Like, I want to see this. I want to see that. And if I agree, I go write it in my notes. Like I like weird lore stuff. So it's like the part of star Wars. I like the most is the force. So like Cytoverse, like give me cool Cytonic lore and stuff. Like I loved Cytonic, not a, popular opinion among shard staff but because like there was like like the whole like the the memories like trapped in the stone like that i really thought was cool yeah this book is all about the lore which is awesome Mm -hmm. ah kimlin 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 (laughs) she has stuff that she needs to do There you go. That's that's my thought. That's my input. I mean, I've already told that to you before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I hear that one a lot. I did not realize she was as popular as she was when I picked the protagonist for the novellas. I was Uh. not aware. I'm now aware. (laughs) Name a slug named Hoyd to really just confuse people. You know, that's happening. Mm -hmm. I have a plan and everything. That's a title for one of the books. Mm -hmm. Just call it Hoyd. Hoyd. Yeah, that, yeah. What could go wrong? They'll love that. (laughs) They have no right to complain because they just name everything Dragonsteel. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) They do. Yeah. Like, we're trying to get Dragonsteel Expo DSX to stick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it would just be better. I'm not, I'm not calling the con. I like that a lot. But do you think there's a problem with like the DSX? Are we hearing it? Uh, <laughs> we, we hear it. You hear yeah, it? but like, but you, you know, it, but it's a lot easier to type than just saying it's definitely dragon steel. Like it, what? It, it's fine in print. <laughs> Especially because but, yeah. DS could also mean Dawn Shard. We already have. Mm-hmm. We already got one of those. That's already would what be. What are you guys conf- doing about Moonbreaker? I'm seeing all the confusion on the forums. Like it's like MB, and people are like, "That's not about MB," and people are like, "Yeah, <laughs> MB." <laughs> well, that's a good point. That's a good point, actually. We're trying not to think about Moonbreaker currently. Okay. Is the the main thing? I'm, like we're still trying to decide whether or not we want to do a thread for it. Mm-hmm. If like sure. we're, there's actually going to be discussion about it. Yeah, it's starting to get to the point though where his books have the same acronyms. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Let's get more yeah. books. B- b- name a book with shadows in the name just to really get like, you know, shadows for science, shadows of self. Get get another one there to confuse and people. And shadows beneath the writing oh, shadows beneath. anthology. That's like true. those were all yeah. right around the same That's time. Point. That's a good point. So you could name like shadows something. I, I don't know. I, uh, 
So you got you got to do that. Shadows or something. Yeah, I should make that the naming motif for the new Skyward. They're all shadows. They're all shadows of something. You can name it like the Shadows Something trilogy. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Easy. Uh, (laughs) The 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 shadows of Cytonics. Yes. There you go. Easy. Spencer's shadow, because like. Yes. presumably it's like the long shadow she leaves over the universe and like a, what's ender shadow it's like yeah, just take yeah. a page out of that yeah yeah, yeah easy mm-hmm. do you know why they're called delvers <laughs> have we just had talked about this we may have talked about this on the previous thing i don't have any idea why they're called delvers <laughs> okay cool <laughs> couldn't tell you <laughs> do we think brandon knows why they're named delvers or is I, it I just a it cool it name he came up with 50 50 it came from somewhere or did did i answer the the tea stall question ever no no you said we, that you no. didn't know you didn't know okay so and now i know because i asked oh, um okay. and tea stall is the the theory was that he didn't think all of the call signs should be things that we know on our earth because mm-hmm. they've had like and when he says that, I was like, yeah, no, probably fewer of them should be, right? Because they've had, like, I don't know how long, thousands of years of history um, mm-hmm. since then. That's, this is this is where I show my lack of continuity and knowledge. Karen tells me how long it has been. I don't what? actually know yeah, how long yeah, it has that's been. That's fine. Um, but um, so T-Stall is supposed to be, it's something in their culture. Then he doesn't know what, and therefore I don't <laughs> okay. know what. But we can stop trying to guess because it is not something we would know by definition. So, so he, he made something up that like, ah, kind of sounded cool. Like, ah, it's yeah, in their culture or something. Cool and didn't really mean anything to us, but means something to them, which means theoretically, maybe, maybe I'll get to make that up at some point. Put, put like me. T-Stall branded, like, like if there's merch after Defiant, you know, like, yeah. like in world merch. It's like, oh, <laughs> these are the heroes from the, the previous story. And like, now we're selling products based off of them. And you can have a T-Stall I, I don't know what that would something. be, but I don't know. Some, something <laughs> for sure. Uh, you have T stall branded catnip. That won't confuse people. <laughs> <laughs> that'll that'll really mm-hmm. that'll really clear things up. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Totally. You should totally listen to us for these ideas and not brand. <laughs> Because these are these are quality, yeah. not Mimi things. Get all of your ideas from us rather than Brandon. <laughs> yeah. I could go that wrong. Would totally go well. <laughs> More space monsters. Put put space sharks. Okay. Yes, yeah. Space was it sharks. was it Evgeny who said that on the stream, or was it somebody else? I don't remember who it was. I think somebody it, it was that. Evgeny. Yeah. 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 On the stream with 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 Brandon, and that's that's mm-hmm. happening. Yeah. I sat at the aquarium with my husband last Saturday. We sat there in front of the shark tank and he was like, so what would you do with the sharks? And I was like, well, I came up with this whole thing for space sharks. I'm super excited. Might take Uh, me a couple of books. In like (laughs) my D&D game, we just finished uh, last night, actually, uh, a battle with a giant space shark who's like asteroid and is like, nice. Yeah, it was it, it. It was very fun. I love wear sharks. Like I have, I, my, my husband paints minis professionally. I only do it as a hobby, but I have like, mm-hmm. like types of minis that I like, like tree people. I love tree people, like the little mm-hmm. goblins with the big, big eyes and like really happy expressions, and like jumping over things. And then wear sharks. I love wear sharks. What, what, <laughs> what makes a wear shark transition, you know, from human to shark form? I don't know. What makes it a mini is that it has human legs. They always have like the like oh, land sharks, like oh, human okay, legs. Okay. Because I was going to ask if they transition. Otherwise, they're just sharks, right? I like I like just the yeah. shark minis too. I have an undead shark sitting on my table waiting to be painted. Because I was like, what if they transition and they're not near water? Do they just flop and die? Oh, yeah, that would be a problem. <laughs> so I guess you need to cut me the Since they have legs, legs the yeah. implication is they can breathe air. Okay, got it. Cool. Good. I, I wasn't expecting we'd talk about were sharks uh, on this, but, but that's that's where this went. Um, mm-hmm. Any other last questions you guys got for Jancy? Uh, no questions for Jancy, but I do. I legitimately think it's the coolest thing that you've become a member of the community. You're on the Discord. Yeah. It's like you haven't left which is really cool. It's like, we haven't driven you off. Like, I think it's the coolest thing because like the community is so fun and so friendly. And like, it feels like 
it feels like I'm not interrupting the discussion. I hope I'm not. Like, I don't want people to feel afraid to like critique the books just because they know I can see it. Like, I don't enter my, my personal rules. I don't interact with any negative criticism at all. I don't do anything with it. I don't touch it because I want them to feel safe. Like, I want everybody to feel safe and like they can say whatever they want about the books and it's fine. Um, and it doesn't hurt my feelings. Like, it would only bother me if people were attacking me as a person, you know, like. And we delete that. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. and you guys, and the, the moderation is so great you guys do such a nice job almost all communities on the internet are a train wreck and yours is so wonderful it makes me really happy that you guys are hanging out yeah no kidding Uh, yeah can't wait for cosmere adaptations what could go wrong oh no you're gonna have film people (laughs) yeah yeah i mean like i'm not i don't mind the new fans i just worry about the the other toxicity involved yeah but you guys will handle it. It's the same as handling the toxicity that shows up. And you guys are so great about just like, nope, whack-a-mole. Yeah. <laughs> are you excited for the convention? Yes, it was so fun. So last year, like my experience with going to conventions, I like going to conventions and I like being on panels and things. Um, my experience with like having a booth and things is that you sit there and nobody buys your books. Right. And it was so fun to be with like all these fans who knew who I was, they would like, there were all those people like dressed up as like boom slugs and stuff. I and mean, obviously this time it'll be misborn, so that'll be slightly different, but it was just so much fun to get to be there with fans who cared about things that I had written. Like that was an incredible experience for me. So yeah, I am super excited to do that again. Like people are like, are you going to the convention? And I'm like, um, guys, I think I'm locked into that one for life. Right. Like (laughs) as long as they will have me, I will be there. I think you will see all of us there. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, I'll be there. Yep. Awesome. Um, Yay. Yeah. And you're doing a panel on shard plate building for Barbies. Yeah. We're doing a workshop building shard plate out of craft foam. I think Jess has a ticket to that. Oh, yay. That's awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, Jancy. But before we go, it's time oh. for who's <laughs> that Alcatraz character, which cannot possibly go wrong with a series that has lasted since 2007 mm-hmm. that you you first wrote this book like a while ago. And uh, I didn't reread uh, and Ian didn't reread uh, things and Kate, Katie reread. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, so all right, you gotta carry, you gotta carry these. So all right, so let's let's we'll go. See. Over. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for who's that Cosmere character? Call. Welcome to Who's That Not Cosmere Character, this time Alcatraz Character, where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17char.com. We read each clue loud, and all these panelists have a chance to guess who's that Cosmere Character. Maybe don't submit any Alcatraz ones, because uh, the series is done. I don't know if we'd ever do another Alcatraz episode. <laughs> like, uh... Until you said yes to the episode, I'm like, well, we'll, we did the Alcatraz 6 reactions. Like, I don't know when (laughs) we're going to do this. And Uh, we had the thought that we since we started the show in 2017, we'd never done an Alcatraz episode. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because Dark Town Cause came out in 2016. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so it's just these two. It's just That's these two. It. That's it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Maybe so, someday there'll be a movie or something. Hey, Maybe. DreamWorks. An episode. Yeah. Come up, then, then, then we'll probably do some more Alcatraz things. Yes. Um, okay, so this one was sent by Wing J. Clue one. This character is from Nalhala. <laughs> in space. That's not good. <laughs> I mean, I know what Nalhala is. Yeah, but I, do you I know do people know who lived there? Um, I am going to guess Brig Dartmoor. The king and Bastille's father. It is not Brig Dartmoor. Names, <laughs> names. Most of the free kingdomers are from Nalhala. Most of them. Yeah, we've got some Mokians. Yeah. Right? Most of them are And from then Nalhala. we have some dinosaurs. Uh, though I don't think we have names for them. I think maybe, did they not have names? Maybe they didn't. I don't remember. Okay. That's book I, one. <laughs> there's a character 
I'm pretty sure he is named, but I don't remember what the name is. The the guy on the Christian Council, the like old mm. older guy, not not the one who's the villain of the book and not drawn, but like the, the the older guy. He has a name. I'm pretty sure. I I would have to go grab the book to know what it is. Uh, I'm guessing him. Do you know if it's that person? Uh, <laughs> no, you know it is not that person? person, but okay. I, I want to <laughs> retract what I said about enjoying hosting this because now I need to remember who these characters are and I absolutely <laughs> don't. No, it is not that character. But you can look at the wiki if you need I can, it. I can, I can, I can. Bastille? It is not that. Bastille has a really annoying brother, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. That's a thing. I'm yeah. going to guess yeah. him. I don't know it, his name. It either. is not Bastille's brother, and I don't know his name. Rikers. His name is Rikers. Oh, that's Rikers. right. Okay, that's awesome. Right. <laughs> you probably knew this at some <laughs> point, somewhere. Uh, well, I need to ask you if Bastille has a brother. That's my state of continuity. Yeah, because he's the heir. Hey, um, hey, do you think Brandon remembers things after he writes them? No, he he. He absolutely doesn't, and Stormlight continuity is even more crazy. He needs he needs Karen and stuff to deal with it. So, all right, clue two. This character saw Alcatraz's speech. Does it specify which speech? I don't know. <laughs> did Alcatraz give a speech? Was that at the end of the Dark Talent? Well, I mean, he did give the speech at. Uh, in the dark talent uh yeah, but, yeah one there's one at about? the beginning to but like the everyone in the world Kings. saw that speech <laughs> but yeah. like was there a speech in book in like book three in the hall it's like i my guess is in my mind it's that speech so like it was to all the monarchs and i've already guessed the null holland monarch so i'm gonna guess his daughter angola Bastille's sister, who is married to the king of Mokia, whose name is Angola. I forgot that person existed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, me too. Oh, uh, no, it's not them. Okay. Did did everyone see the speech in the Dark Talent? Yes, I, I yeah. Yes, Every, right? like, uh, Except like, Bastille, Hushlanders so it's not Bastille then, because she was unconscious. That's true. Oh, yeah. But like, Hushlanders literally saw it. Right. Yeah, I don't remember that part. Yeah, no, no, and like, okay. and like he supercharged the glass so much that it was like in every reflection yeah. of yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> We're, like people in DC at least. Yeah, yeah. People in yeah. DC definitely saw it. Look, I didn't really, really fact check these. Down. I didn't really fact and check these clues. Valhalla. I just assumed that Wing J is accurate here. So I'm gonna assume that we we've got literally all our characters except for Bastille still in play, and I'm gonna say Leavenworth, he's not Holland, right? Yes. Uh it is not Leavenworth. <laughs> Who are characters from these books? <laughs> Just throw out. <laughs> like, which of the symmetries? Gonna throw out Folsom. It's not Folsom. All right, clue three. This character is allergic to seaweed. I remember this being a thing. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> Ian's memory carries carries us through so many things. Remembering random factoids of things from books and wobs. Seaweed. But literally, I just remember like, like seaweed allergy is a thing. That's mm. all I remember. Oh, there are no connections to anything else. <laughs> mm. Just that one mm. random fact floating mm. in a void. Yeah, there's no connections because oh. we're not in the Cosmere. That's a pun. I think I'm down to smedries at random. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm going to go with ID. It's not ID. Is that how you say it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really say it AD, but it, yeah, because it's ADX. Uh, Sing Sing. It's not Sing Sing. <laughs> he's Mokian, isn't he? Yeah, I, th I thought I mean, he was. But like he, he's a Smedry, so he's part now. Sure. Paul Holland. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Seaweed. Quentin. It's not Quentin. Clue four, which will be very unfortunate for Chancey's uh, Smedry guessing. Uh, this character is not human. <laughs> is it the dragon? It's not the dragon. Oh. That would have been awesome. Yeah, that, that's where my brain went. Non-human care. That was why I guessed it so quickly, so no one else could. Yeah, that's right. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. Is it the Gak? It is not the Gak. 
Although, uh, fun fact, uh, I I did. Wing J actually originally sent me the gak, and I said that character doesn't have a name, so I, I refused it. So that was the one that Wing J wanted oh. to do initially. But no, it is not the gak. I'm trying to think of non human characters in Alcatraz. Oh, the dinosaurs, but the dinosaurs are yeah. from like the the monarchy of the esteemed former republic. Yeah. I have this. this is an <laughs> awesome name. The kingdom of the revered former republic of the thunder lizards of Dino Land. Yeah. Was but there one least, of them that wasn't? At least one of the dinosaurs had a name. <laughs> I'm going to guess that dinosaur that has a name. <laughs> there was uh, one named Charles, I'm pretty sure. Is it a dinosaur? It, it, it is. It is indeed a dinosaur. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to call it. It is Douglas the T-Rex. I am genuinely not <laughs> sure if he is from Nahala nor not. And I am looking. Uh, but yes, it is <laughs> Douglas the T-Rex. I. I don't know these books well enough to <laughs> fact check these, but yeah, he might be from Dino Land instead, right? Because that's yeah. where they're all from, right? Presumably. I so, thought maybe it doesn't had, specify. They had the, so the where they're getting the they're from Nalhala thing from is the uh, they have Nalhala accents because that's where Alcatraz oh. and Bastille have the whole argument about whether it's a British accent or a Nalhala accent, oh, and so okay. I right. feel like that makes it at least legitimate, even if technically mm. they're from some other place mm. right next to Nalhala or that's something. Fair. Yeah. That's, okay. fair. that's fair. That's fair. Though Nalhalans having British accents is funny because it's actually shaped like France and France does not exist. So where do French right. accents come from? Right. That's true. That's true. Clue, clue five was this character has sharp teeth. Mm. Very helpful. Still could have been the dragon. Still could have been the dragon. Uh, also, this character doesn't have a copper mind article, so I couldn't really verify any of these, even though he's a named character. Send some love to the copper mind for uh, Alcatraz characters because, uh, yeah, they, they they need help. It's done. You can. It's do done. You, you can everything complete you want. The entire thing, and you never need to worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the people who keep the cover mind, though, because I used that so much <laughs> for the for for this book and also for the novellas. Oh, oh my gosh, I was in that thing all the time. Oh, was it was it actually helpful for the Alcatraz ones? <laughs> Honestly, a little I mean, surprising. A little. A little. <laughs> okay. Uh, better than nothing. The the Skyward the Skyward articles are are, are much better. Uh, especially yeah, they're more robust for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad the Copper Mind is, is useful uh, to it, to to collaborating authors because that that's that's like the highest praise, right? If you want to look up things and you can just be like, all right, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Here's the facts. I think. For Bastille, I think it was mostly physical descriptions. I was like, what mm. does this person look like? And there was a, there was some of that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sure. sense. Cool. Well, Jancy, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, no, well, no upcoming projects uh, in the very near future. Of course, we will we'll see those Skyward uh, novels eventually, which will be very yeah. exciting. But I, I had kind of forgotten. Oh, yeah, it was this year that we talked to you about Evershore and things. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, this year has been real long, hasn't it? <laughs> right. Like, it oh, no. sure. Eight months ago, which would have put it in February ish February. time. Yeah. yeah, that's when it came out. And then we had March. Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. Right. The, the, the year of year Sanderson stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's Isn't a lot it reason. still March? Yeah. Right? That's why I feel. It's still, still March, March 2020, still actually. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you can find us on 17char.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you can want. You can join our Discord server. It's down below. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. You can leave us a review on iTunes. You can support our Patreon for as little as a dollar. There is tons of... Uh, Cosmere content also being on the channel with Diceborn, our actual play series mm -hmm. um, in the Mistborn world. We're doing preview chapters for the Lost Metal and their Spanned Reads, which is ending this month. So 
Uh, yeah, you got to Alcatraz Shardcast. There'll be plenty of Cosmere in the next year. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Starting in November. Uh, I think we'll have... I think this is our second to last episode before Lost Metal. Depends if we get the White Sand Omnibus. So, hey, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, yep. But, yeah. Thanks so much for coming on, Jancy. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, Thank we'll you. see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Call.